from Paramount Pictures. It's the Tom Likas Show. Am I still on the air? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. It's Like Us 101, the ongoing on air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Jerry on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. Well, I'm kind of uh, in a sticky situation. Um, I I met this girl at school less than a week ago. Um, just Monday, she lets me know that she's attracted to me, okay? Um, but she tells me she's married, has a four-month-old, her husband's overseas, okay? Overseas um, doing what? Excuse me? Overseas doing what? He's in, the, he's in the Army. So let me understand. He's defending your country. Yeah, he's defending my country. Uh-huh. And the thing is, she told me she wants to... I mean, for the past couple of days, we've been having sex. Why are you doing that? Honestly, I, I, I'm I, trying to take... Because uh, you're defend. desperate. I'm not desperate, but... Yes, you are. How's that being desperate? This is the wife... I don't care what the woman said to you. You know, just because somebody makes it possible for you to do something doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So is it just the wrong thing to do because... That's one thing. That's one thing, but since you don't care about that... By the way, I believe that should be treason, and I believe you should be hung for what you're doing. I believe that she should be hung, too, because uh, this kind of thing will distract somebody who's trying to defend our country. And I really, and I'm not kidding when I say this, you deserve to be hung like anyone else who commits treason. But uh, since you don't care about that, let's talk about the pragmatic side of this. Aren't you worried what will happen if he finds out? No, I'm not worried about that. Why not? I don't, honestly, I just started thinking about it today, and I, I honestly feel like a scumbag because, you know, he is overseas. But then at the same time, it's like if she really didn't want it. What happens if he finds out that you have been penetrating his wife? What do you think could happen? I, I can only uh, expect the worst. Yeah, which might be what, Jerry? Come after me, you know. Yeah, and you're not the least bit concerned about that, are you? Not well, you're a fool because he's in Iraq now, but one day he's coming home. He's coming home. There's going to be phone bills, and there's going to be uh, other people who've seen you come and go, and there's going to be, uh, you know, whatever other bills uh, come into the house. Yeah. And there's going to be her friends who she's going to tell about this, and they'll tell some of their friends about it because women can't have sex and shut their trap. They can't do it. No, and she told me already that she told her best friend right. that I'm uh, the best she's had, you know, quote unquote. Right. And I'm worried that you know, it won't get to him. And I hope it does. And- I hope he. I hope he comes over and beats the crap out of you. That's what I hope for. I. I hope he comes over there and really lays you out. Uh, well, she. I'm not the only one she's hooked up. With, I so don't she- care. You're the one I know. That's true. You know, you make. An unbelievable amount of sense. Uh, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. You know. I think. I think. I. I will stop. I will end it today. I don't want. To, uh, you know. And she's been telling me. You know. I like you so much. I like you. I like you. Here it I don't, comes. I don't want her to get attached. You know. I don't want to get attached. She told the same thing to him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I guess I'm gonna end it. I am. I am gonna end it. 
Hold on a second here, Jerry. Mario, what did you want to say to Jerry? Hey, how's it going, Tom? Hey, Jerry. Um, you know, I'm I'm an ex uh, ex soldier for the army, and uh, to be honest with you, man, if I were the person that's overseas protecting our country, right, the ones that we are living in every single day, and you're boning my wife too, when I get out, I'm gonna shank you, dude. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah, a good I... it's a good thing that you're saying that you are going to quit this with this lady because, dude. You don't know what kind of troubles you're going to get into, dude. Women are women are women, dude. They're all bitches. We know that, right? They're going to do whatever they want to do, when they want to do it, and with who they want to do it. Now, we can't control them. But if you're going to be doing that to a woman who's married to a, uh, uh, you know, a soldier that's out there, dude, battling these freaking terrorists on a day-to-day -day basis so you and his wife and his child can have a better life in the future... You know what I mean, man? It's just, it's not cool, brother. It's just not cool. So if you are going to cut it, cut it, brother. Yeah, I know. I, I, honestly, I do feel like a scumbag. Everybody's been telling me, dude, you're, that's really, you know, messed up. Why would, how would you feel? You know what I mean? How would yeah, I yeah. feel? You know, yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know. Dude, and, and it's not to say that I haven't been there. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger and stuff. And I've kind of made the same type of mistakes that you're kind of looking at right now, brother. But believe me, in the long run, it's not good. It's yeah. not good. And that's all I got to say. Uh, Tom, blow me up, brother. Here you go. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Like Us 101. I am your professor. Jason on the Tom Like Us show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? Not much. I just want to say, man, you're awesome, dude. This bullpen idea you got is not the right thing to do, dude. Thank you. I've been having it going on for since ever since I started high school, dude. Excellent. Yeah, but um, I gotta say those closers are the best ones of all. Who is? The closers. Oh, the closers! Absolutely, that's the idea. Oh yeah, man, they're one of a kind. Yeah, you you only want them in there for one inning, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. And get them the hell out. Pump them and dump them, dude. That's it, baby. All right, man. Well, take me out of the bong list. I just want to tell you you're awesome, man. All right, Jason. Thank you so much. <coughs> Steve on the Tom Likas Show with your professor. Hello. Hi, Tom. Steve here. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Thank you. I must tell you a horror story in Los Angeles here. Okay. Okay. About 10 years ago, I had a religious ceremony with no license to someone already married. We were together for 10 years, separate tax returns, uh, house only in my name. Uh, we do an agreement, a judgment. Three years later, she makes a motion to set it aside, hires a lawyer. I've been in court for three years, over $100,000. Ugh. With no license. Separate tax returns, house only in my name, mm -hmm. based upon that religious ceremony. Amazing, amazing. No, I mean, you really get, it, it, it no longer takes an official marriage ceremony, and I've been hearing this from uh, other attorneys, especially divorce attorneys, who are telling me if you have, like, a commitment ceremony or if you have a, get a bunch of friends together to declare your love or whatever, uh, there are ways of fabricating that into, hey, you passed yourselves off as a married couple, therefore you're a married couple, therefore you owe like a married couple. Yeah. Well, even the current judges, if you get, get a female judge in family court, she'll have a female clerk, a female bailiff, uh, all female lawyers. The man is really the odd man out there in that court. Completely. Yeah. You know, so it's a really, uh, you know, the, the judges are saying, let's try to find a way to make you pay more. Because after all, you know, we're all in this together, we women here. You don't want to let them live in your house. You just don't want them living in your house. Yeah. Can we keep it together? Appreciate it. Thank you for that, Steve. Wow. one 800 800 tom is our telephone number. Here comes Joy on Like Us 101. Hello. Hi. How Hi. are you doing, Tom? Great. Can I tell you, you're one of my favorite guys because you're straight up. I am. Okay, so perfect. Okay, I've been in this relationship for five years now. And in the beginning, it was like we were kids. You know, I was... I was. How 17. old are you, dear? I'm 23. Strike one. Okay. Okay. And so 
um, basically, this guy tells me that he loves me and he wants to be with me and he cares about me. But then when it comes down to showing it, he doesn't act like it at all. Like, uh, as far as gifts go, you know how you say you treat your girls in your bu- your bullpen like certain girls? Yeah. Yeah, he treats me like a particular type of girl, but then what he tells me is completely different. So what's going on? Well, you probably are in his bullpen. Well, I know, but should I listen to what he says? Because considering that we have that history and that I was his serious girlfriend for a long time, should I pay attention well, first to what of all, he's dear, saying first about of, love? First of all, dear, um, you should not have a boyfriend. and You just shouldn't. He should be in your bullpen. That's true. I mean, seriously. I mean, come well, on. You know, you're going to live to your 80s, dear. What is the rush to have a serious relationship? You know, I think it's just because it was we're high school sweethearts. And it's incredibly, I can't imagine. High school thought- sweethearts are like something to look back upon fondly later on in life. But you don't act upon that and try to make that person into a husband. Well, yeah. But well, how do I separate myself from him? Because our lives, we go to school together, we share the car. I mean, you just it, tell him you, you know what? This was great, but you know what? We've uh, moved on from high school, and you need your space. Use the line that all women use. <laughs> yeah, I honestly haven't pulled that one now. I, I should try that one. Yes, and you know why you need your space? Because to fit a fourteen-inch personality in your bed, it takes space. <laughs> yeah, you need your That's space. Good. Well, I'm glad. That's why they call it myspace.com. When a woman says, I need my space, <laughs> that's where she uh, gets it. Yeah, that's true. But I don't want to be a slut either because I just need a smaller bullpen. There. You don't have to have sex with all the guys in your bullpen. That's true. Okay. Because some of them will be such nice guys, they won't know how to close the deal. Yeah. Like these guys who called in. <laughs> <laughs> that one guy he was so nice. He sounded so cute. You were telling him he's too nice. I totally agree. Yeah, you wouldn't have sex with him, would you? Honestly, no. Yeah, you haven't even seen the guy. Yeah. That's my point. <laughs> All right, Tom. Thanks a lot. Can you take d- me out with a bong rib and a Jesus? Yes, I can. Here you go. Jesus. Tom Likas. 1 800 5 800 Tom. This show is for men who want to get laid for as little money as possible. Okay, if guys want to get married, then there's another class for it. But Obviously, you not your head is all up your butt, honey. You don't understand it. Guys who want to get laid. Well, listen, guys who don't want to do it will not. There's always a choice. It's Like Is 101 on the Tom Like Is Show. Oh, yeah. The Tom Like Is Show, Like Is 101. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Richard on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Oh, um, hey, how's it going? Great. Awesome, awesome. Hey, I have, a, I have a real problem in which I can use an expert opinion. All right. Okay, I have this. Um, I used to go out with this girl a couple years back, right? She was, uh, she was my high school sweetheart. We, went, we were together, you know, until. Just after college, my like, oh, actually, my first year in college, right? Out of the blue, we we break up. First of all, out of the blue, she calls me, and she uh, tells me she broke up with her fiance. Blah blah blah. Why is this your problem? Well, because she comes over and she brings like locks on for my doors in my room. I don't have any locks. She's like, oh, we need some privacy. She brings over a bottle of wine, and I'm thinking I can definitely close the deal. Why are you letting this happen? She is by far, one reason, one reason only. She's by far the best I've ever been with. How many have you been with? You're 22. I've, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 plus. 
Come on, you have that sex. You have not had sex with thirty plus women. You have it. Maybe you've kissed thirty plus women, or maybe you've visited the homes of thirty plus women. You have not had sex with thirty plus women. I, I live. I live in a city where there's seven colleges. That doesn't mean you've had sex with thirty plus women. Well, regardless, this girl, my the one that I've liked for a while, uh, obviously left me. She went with some other guy. She got engaged. Now she's coming back, obviously wanting uh, a little something else. No, she wants more I, than that. She wants to marry you. Well, I'm not looking for that. Well, I, guess what? She That's what she wants, and that's uh, the price you're going to have to pay. Well, I think, this is my personal opinion, I think she's just looking to have sex. She's horny, and she wants to have sex. She All just right, broke well, up. You're going to find out. Because well, she was a high think... school sweetheart. She was never a booty call for you. No, no, she wasn't. And she, she wasn't was a booty there. call for her fiancé either. No, she's uh, she's kind of a one-woman type girl, but I... There we I'm go. I can... I, Richard, you're go, you, you can get sex with her, but she wants a relationship. And you're just the kind of guy who'll give it to her. Well, do you think it would be a good idea just to sleep with her and keep it at that? No, because you can't keep it at that. You're not hearing me. She won't tolerate it. Well, she wouldn't know if it happens that one time. Yeah. I mean, I'm try I'm talking about, you know, both of us getting a little sauced up, having a good time, and then... By the way, that's you know, exactly how women get pregnant, you know. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I know. I, I understand that. I'm not... You do? So you were using a... Oh, oh, you, don't know, you don't know if she's on the pill or not. Well, my my main concern is, like, like moral... Is, like, should I really... Be with my ex-girlfriend? Is that against man law? I mean, should I have sex with my ex-girlfriend? I'm telling you, this is somebody who is anxious to get married. That's why she was a fiancé. Huh. Women would who you hit it anyways? No. Should I hit it anyways? I wouldn't. Because then you can't get rid of her. She's human lint. Hmm. You know what? That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so what do you think I should do? Just be, be cool with her and uh, tell her and the talk past to her occasion occasionally. The past is the past. So don't even touch her. No. Hmm. Because she will wow, that's suck. Not what I wanted to hear you. I know it's not what you wanted to hear. It will suck you in. She will try to get you into a relationship. Okay, so damn. So do, oh man, should I uh, be up front with her? Here, this is the next step. Should I be up front with her and tell her that I don't want a relationship? Because I think she keeps inching closer and closer. Check this out, Tom, real quick. I don't know how much time you have, but she is one of those anti-MySpace people, right? And I've had a profile because that's how I hook up, too. You know why she's anti-MySpace? She gets one, dude. She gets one right away when yeah. she sees mine. Uh-huh. So, like, I'm this. She wants to like. She's getting like. She's getting trying to make you. She's life. trying to make you jealous. Trying to make me jealous. Yes, she gets a MySpace page, and then she's got eight hundred and three friends, and eight hundred and two of them are guys. What do you think that's about? I thought she was. I thought she was just trying to get closer to me. No, it, what, you pal, you're writing a fairy tale. She sees that you have a MySpace page and you got right. friends, and a lot of them are female. Right. So she gets a MySpace page, and the friends are going to be overwhelmingly male. Okay. Don't you see? This is, you just said she's a one woman man. Yes. So what makes you think she'd just have sex with you? Well, only because we've done it, you know, for every day for. You were the high days. school sweetheart! Right. Right. Then you break well, up with her and she goes and gets engaged to somebody else. Yeah. The reason why, well, let me, should I tell you, let me tell you the reason why. She said he, she asked, he asked her in front of a crowd of people so she couldn't say no. That was her excuse to me. I, look, who cares what her excuse to you is? She was yeah. engaged to him. Right. She could have said yes and then after the people were gone say no. So... If I'm hearing you correctly, it's definitely a bad idea to hook up with an ex, even though she's the best you've had. And could I'm telling you, this is the kind of ex who will get you into a relationship. Hmm. Okay. Well, I definitely don't want that.
Definitely don't want that. All right, well, I guess you answered my question, boss. I really appreciate it. I just, half my friends were saying one thing, the other half was saying another thing, and you're the man, so I guess I'm going to have to go with your decision. Good luck, Richard. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. BJ on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Mr. Likas, how you doing? Doing great. I just want to call you Mr. Likas because of my profound respect for you. Why? Thank you. <laughs> I want to give a, a little piece of, uh, of information, you know, how you affected me and completely changed my life. Uh, I'm 22. About two years ago, I got into this really... Uh, it's a relationship, and uh, it's a big no no. And uh, this girl just she made me into the biggest pussy I've ever witnessed. Any of my friends could witness. And uh, and we broke up like three months ago. And you know I'm I'm here wallowing in my misery. And and my buddy uh, told me, Have you heard of Tom Likas? He's like, You should you should listen to this dude. He he talks a lot. Of really, you know, he talks, you know, with truth and backing and stuff and i was like you know i'll give this guy a try and ever since then like three months ago i, I just got my life together you know i i realized you know you know tom likas is like the coolest guy and the only reason that is because he worked really hard and he has lots of money because he worked really hard and at that point i realized you know what i need to get my life together and i need to be somebody and I need to, you know, go to college and get an education. And then right when I realized that, you know, I enrolled into a, into a community college. And then in one more semester, I'm going to uh, UCSD, and I ain't looking back. And in regards to, you know, like it's 101, like, that's like my Bible, you know. Like, it really does work. I don't care about any sort of girl, you know, in my life right now. I don't want any sort of relationship, and I don't understand why guys rush into relationships. I mean, is it the tail that they want? Because they can't. They think it's the only way they can get laid. I don't understand, Mr. Likas. Honestly. Like, people just need to understand money is the biggest aphrodisiac. It is the biggest one. And, like, I just want to say thank you. You, you really changed my life. And, and to all those guys out there, listen. Listen to what this guy has to say because he really speaks the truth. And I appreciate it, Mr. Likas. Can you blow, uh, blow me up with a bong? Of course I can. Here you go. Thank you, Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Freddie on Likas 101 with your professor. Hello. Hello, Professor. Yes. Wanted to uh, enlist your help in drilling down on an issue regarding uh, being a jerk to women. Uh, I, I happen to, uh, I have a pretty good grasp on your philosophy and 101. I got to tell you, Thursdays are both my favorite and least favorite day to listen to the show. Favorite because it makes me feel good for what I know. Least favorite because, man, you got a lot of work to do. Uh, but you're doing it, so props to you for that. I think you do a great thing for Thank you. for the male community. Uh -huh. What I want to get down to is um, I have friends that will come to me and will ask for advice in specific situations when they're trying to deal with girls. And rather than tell them to be a jerk, which is, um, <laughs> quite frankly, some of them are just their puppy dogs and they can't be jerks, uh, they'll, they'll mess it up if they try. Um, what I try to do is I try to look at what, what's the desired effect of being a jerk to a woman. What you really want them to do is, is wonder if you like them and wonder if you are available to them. So I think that there's, there's sometimes a different way to, to getting a girl to have that, hmm, does he like me? Is he into me? Now I'm telling you that women react better when you are a jerk. Uh, they uh, Women have uh, frequently uh, insecure uh, attitude about themselves, low self-esteem. And that is uh, the way you get to a woman's heart is by treating her like crap. So what's your advice to the guy that is just truly... A, 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 a young man called, I don't know, maybe five or six calls ago, and you, you, you mentioned that he just sounded too nice. I try to picture this guy being a little bit elusive or kind of being tough on a girl, telling her you're, you know, straight up, you're just my booty call. He couldn't do it. Well, uh, but it's not just saying that. It's uh, not answering the phone on the weekend, 
uh, being unavailable, being unreliable, saying you're going to call her tomorrow and then not calling her for two weeks. That's what we're talking about here. Excellent. Excellent. I consider myself to be one of your, uh, if, you're a, if you're a college professor, I'm a junior high teacher in the local community. Uh, I appreciate the clarification. It'll help me get your word out there. Thank you for that. I appreciate the call. Take me out with the uh, the African kids singing. I like that one. All right, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. I don't know if I misunderstood you, but did you mean that all women are completely ignorant? There's generally a, a mathematical formula for this: the more attractive a woman is, the less she knows. <laughs> Best buddy. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's Likas 101. I am your professor on the Tom Likas Show. Of 1-800-5800-TOM. Jamar, hello. Uh, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay, Jamar. Yeah, man. Uh, a while a while ago, um, I'd say about a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago, I'm not too sure, I thought I had got this girl pregnant. But it turns out she tells me there's another would-be baby's father, and she doesn't know whose the baby father is. So, And, and she hasn't hit me for child support yet. I just want to know what you think of that. Well, uh, if I were you, I would certainly consult with an attorney about this, and here's why. Because you don't know if she tried to hit you up for child support. The way it works in California is that they uh, ask her who the father of the child is. Like, let's say she applies for welfare or food stamps or some such, WIC or whatever. Any kind of governmental assistance. If she gives your name, they say, what's your address? Now, if she doesn't want you to be found... She can give her own address or any other address that she uh, can say was your last known address. And what they do is they send a piece of mail to that address. They, it's not registered mail. It's not certified mail. There's no proving it was ever delivered. And then later on, uh, if she says, uh, hey, where's my money? Uh, if you uh, didn't know that you were called the father until uh, the uh, time limit is up, then you are the father whether you like it or not. Wow, so even if I am not the father and this other guy's the father and she puts my name there, I'm paying. That could happen. And that's why you need to consult an attorney and and make sure that your rights are protected. Oh, so what if, because uh, I, oh my God, this, this is just blowing my mind right about now. Um, so I don't know if I'm the father, basically, and. She hasn't hit me for child support. So Look, I know how it is. You don't want to know if you're the father. But guess what? Uh, they can come back at you. You know, they can come back at you 17 years from now uh -huh. and say you owe 17 years of back child support plus interest. Wow. So you don't want to let it get to that point. You want an attorney to tell you what your options are. Now, it's not that expensive. You're going to consult for an hour with an attorney, maybe. And that could cost you anywhere from 150 bucks to well, maybe five or six hundred bucks. Uh, but how much will that be worth compared to if she uh, uh, wrongly accuses you of being the father and then nails you for child support for 18 or more years? Oh yeah, that hundred to five hundred bucks is minimal in comparison, definitely. That's right. So you want to find uh, an attorney who deals with family court matters, uh -huh. and you want to go right, make an appointment, go right in there. And tell them that uh, you want to know what your what your responsibilities are, what your risks are, what you need to do. So uh, you you suggest I should do that rather than just uh, get a DNA test, seeing if the kid is mine or not. Well, if you can get a DNA test, fantastic. But remember the risk of that DNA test without an attorney, with anybody around. You know, if you get a DNA test and she finds out you're the father, then she might definitely come after you for child support. Oh wow. Like, oh, man. So you really, uh, you know, I'm not an attorney. You really need to talk to an attorney about what he thinks you should do. And it yeah. should be somebody whose specialty is family family law. Wow. All right. 
right. Thanks, Tom. You think you could blow me up with a bong hit at the end? Of course I can. David on Like Is 101, hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Tom, um, you know, I've been listening to your show for quite a while. And uh, basically the story goes, you know, I start going out with this girl, you know. And, uh, well, before that I was going out with another chick and we broke up. And I couldn't get over that like I could in the past, you know. So I had to find somebody else. And my friend took me out with this girl. And, you know, we start going out, all that stuff. And from the beginning, you know, she kept on pushing me, you know, for marriage, for kids, that. And, she, you know, she kept saying that I love you, this, that. And I wasn't really ready for that whole thing, you know. So, you know, little by little, little by little, you know, there was like a few things that I really didn't like about her. But, you know, anyways, it, it came to a point that, you know, we blinked. And the next thing you know, we're dating for like a year and a half, you know. And I was at a point that I was going to break up with her, really, because, you know, there were so many things, you know, her, you know, her parents kind of thing, this, that. There was too much drama, and I was really fed up, and I was really going to break up. The next thing I know, like, you know, next week, after, like, you know, a few days later, you know, she comes up to me and she says, you know, like, uh, we need to take a break, you know, break up, whatever. And uh, all of a sudden... (laughs) <laughs> everything changed. Like, you know, in my mind, everything changed. You know, like, I, you know, I start, you know, blaming myself for everything, you know. And even though all my friends are telling me otherwise that I'm wrong, I still can't get over her. I can't focus on work. You know, I can't focus on anything. And I kept thinking about her. And my friends even, you know, hooked me up with online dating or whatever, you know, just to meet any other girls and go out. So every time I go out, you know, I keep saying, like, you know, yeah, she was better. This, so what are you, like, are you looking to get married or something? You know, I was the kind of guy that I would even tell my best friend not to get married ever or whatever, and I was against that. Really, I was like I said, I was like one of your biggest listeners, and you know, uh, I was like one of the biggest followers. But for some reason, all of a sudden, you know, when she, you know, when she said that, you know, we need to cool down, whatever. All of a sudden, I'm better say, you know, like you know, I love you, you know, we need. To- that I'm hey, cool. you gotta watch your mouth. We're on the air. You can't be saying the s word on the air. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you know, everything changed for me, you know, all of a sudden she became like, you know, the best thing I ever had, this, that, you know, and I keep blaming myself, even though I know that she's, you know, that she put me through a lot of stuff. No, oh, yeah. she wants to have sex with other people. That, when it, when someone's, when a woman says they need to take a break. Yeah. You know, it's like the old joke about the uh, fortune cookie at the Chinese restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the one where they say, add the words in bed. At the end uh-huh. of any fortune. All right. Well, when a woman says anything, put the words <laughs> from you or with you at the end of the sentence, okay? So when she yeah. says, I need to take a break from you. Because, you know, her priority has been always her work and her parents. Like, all this year and a half, maybe we went out, you know, once or twice a week, pretty much, you know? We didn't really see each other every day type of thing. And, you know, every time that I would, you know, be like, you know, let's go out on a road trip, let's go out, this, that, she's like, oh, I have work to do, or I'm helping my mom, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Now, you know, that this whole thing, breakup thing came up, I'm blind. I don't see those things, you know? All I remember is the good things or whatever, which is like I can count it with my fingers. And I can count with my fingers how many times, you know. Well, if if you can only count the good things on your fingers, that's not enough to be getting all upset about. You should be moving on. It's. That's the thing, man. I don't know what happened to me, but I can move on as fast as I could. Like, uh, you're you know, pussy whipped. That's what that's what happened to you, and uh, you need to get over it. She dumped you to have sex with other men. Why are you in love with someone who dumped you to have sex with other men? I guess I'm in denial, you know? like I'm well, telling you, she dumped you to have sex with other men. Women don't say, I'm dumping you because I want to have sex with other men. They say things like... We need. I need my space. We need to take a break. They have all these different euphemisms they use. They all mean the same thing. I'm about to have sex with somebody else, or I'm already having sex with somebody else. You know, that's funny you mentioned that because 
you know, she kept, you know, you know, sending me messages like, hi, honey, you know, I'm calling you this, that. And she would never, you know, use the, you know, like, you know, I love you or I miss you a lot, this, that. You know, she's kind of like, you know, on the colder side. In the meantime, you know, like after like a few weeks, you know, she came up and she said that I'm dating, you know, I'm seeing somebody else. You well, know? she told you that. No, I know. You know, she said it. And then, you know, like last week, you know, she comes up and she goes, I was lying. I was just trying to make you jealous. Yeah, well, that's not true. She's dating somebody else. And, you know, today, actually, what happened was, and, you know, they don't call me anymore. The next thing I know, I get a, you know, text message, you know, middle of the night. I'm sleeping, you know, four in the morning because she works at night sometimes. She goes, I got your message. I'm, I'm speechless. Anyways, morning, she calls me up. She goes, you know, um, I can't imagine you being with anybody else. I'm speechless. I, I know I'm jealous. I was lying to you. I wasn't with anybody else. This, that. And... Well, then you don't want to be with somebody who plays those games. And you know what? You know what? I moved out of my house. My parents' house. You know, I moved into an apartment. And all my best friends, they've been helping me move in and everything. But she was never there for me. Never. She never even touched anything here. Like, my best friend's wife has been, you know, like, fixing everything up for me. You know, they helped me throughout everything. And she was never there for me. She never even came here. Do you think if she actually loves me enough and she actually cares for me? Would no, she, she plays yeah. games with your head. She's either having sex with someone else or she's playing games with you and trying to manipulate you. Neither one of those is a good option. Tom, what's the best thing you can tell me right now? Because there's a few girls Move that I went on. out with, you know, Move online on. dating, and they were pretty cute. They were like pretty cool personality-wise. I mean, I'm not saying they were gorgeous, but they were pretty cool. Like, and then when I was going out with them, still, I'm like, oh, you know, I like this one. I, you know, I like her better. This that. What's the ultimate that you can give me? What wow. I... you, every time you think of this girl, remember that she's having sex with somebody else. Every time, that's what you have to think about. I, that's all I can say to you. I, I wish you the best of luck on that, but uh, I don't know what more I can tell you. Michelle on Like Is 101, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, you know, lots happened in the past half hour. I've been on hold, but I was um, a relentless because I really needed to discuss this with you. Yeah. Um, and I and I'm hoping not to say anything out of line. I'm gonna constrict my time as much as possible. Just don't use goes. obscenities. That's all. No, 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 no. And it's not gonna be profanity. It's not. It's just uh, it has to do with sex. Some of the things I'm gonna say. All right, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, so it happens that I've been with the same person for eight years, and. Prior to being with him, I'd had other relationships, and I was with some real jerks. You know, the sex was amazing with a lot of these other guys. With the jerks. You know, with the jerks. That's what I keep telling crazy. everybody. Pardon me? That's what I tell the guys. The sex is yeah. better with the jerks. Don't be a nice guy. Be a jerk. No, they were all jerks, you know. Um, in any ways, the sex was outrageous. Now, for the past eight years, I've been with the same person, and the relationship's outrageous but the sex is not. And you wonder how can a relationship without the sex being that great be a great relationship? But, you know, I, I guess as you get older, I'm 32, you know, you start um, looking at what is more important in your life, right, which is a relationship, because one day the sex is going to be gone. I've chosen to be in a relationship. I like being in a relationship. Yes, but as women get into their 30s, they have more needs sexually. You know, I, I was very promiscuous when I was younger. I had some of the most outrageous um, sex that if my mother knew, she, you know, shown me um, threesomes, you know, all the yummy stuff. But then I got older and I wasn't, you know, I thought that that my relationship, that things were great. But honestly, now, like when I was on hold waiting for you, I don't know if you're going to have to bleep this out or hang up the conversation, but I pleasured myself listening to your voice, wondering just how great you might be in bed. You know, really? and uh, um, things of that nature. And I love my man. I really do. And I couldn't stop him cheating on him, but I find myself doing this. Because, again, um, dear, don't forget the fact that when women are in their 30s, uh -huh. they physically start to change. Okay. They become more orgasmic. Yeah. Uh, more relaxed about sex. You have more experience. Right. And right. uh, as outrageous as the sex may have been when you were in your teens or 20s, right. uh, you're more orgasmic when you're in your 30s and you need it more. So uh, it's hard to change a guy who can't get the job done and the one who can. Tom Likas Show.
Southern California's FM Chalk Station. 97.1.